Welcome everyone, my name is Vera and today I will show you how to paint a beautiful painting of Australian sunset with some kangaroos jumping in there. Guys, remember you are allowed to pause this video whenever you want to. And if you feel like I'm going a little bit too fast for your liking and you would like to give yourself a few extra minutes for a certain step, just pause this video, give yourself enough time to finish a certain step and then unpause it and continue painting with me. Let's start by making sure we have all the art supplies that we need for today. First of all, you're going to need a wonderful canvas. I am going to be using 16 by 20 canvas. It's pretty big. You guys are free to use a smaller canvas if you would like, or you can join me and use this bigger canvas. And remember, if you use a smaller canvas, it probably will take you a little bit less time. And if you use bigger canvas, it's going to take you a bit longer, which all is good. It's all good. Whatever canvas you would like. If you don't have canvas, you could use paper, just make sure it's thick paper. You could use uh, cardboard, you could use wood, but if you're using wood, please prime it and send it before you paint. Now, second thing we're gonna need is palette. I have my 100 million time use plate, and I love this one. Feel free to use any plastic palette that you have, piece of cardboard, piece of paper, Tupperware lid, anything you would like will work for your palette. Now we're going to need a cloth. I have my reusable fabric cloth, but if you guys don't have reusable fabric cloth, you could definitely, definitely, definitely use a paper towel or a napkin. That's totally fine. Now, next thing we're going to need is painting water. I have a little cup with water right here. So make sure you grab some painting water. And then we're going to need brushes. I will be using three different brushes. I'm going to be using a large brush. In my case, it's a large square brush. Yours doesn't have to be square. Any large brush will do. I have my medium brush and I have my small brush. So as long as you have a couple brushes of different sizes, you should be good. If you have a larger set of brushes, even better. If you only have one, that's okay too. Just make sure you use it under different angles to get the best out of your brush. And of course, last thing we're going to need is paint. I have my large jars of acrylic paint, primary colors. And just to show you, this is the brand of paint that I'm using. It's a student grade acrylic. It mixes perfectly. The only downside of this, well, not downside, um, something you should know about this paint. It's um, slightly transparent, so I'll be mixing a lot and I'll be mixing white into white colors just to make it less transparent. But if you're using premixed paint, you don't have to mix in white. And if you're using mixing paint like me, I will tell you what to do and I'll tell you what to add and what not to add once we get there. So guys, I have my primary colors. I have blue, red, um, yellow, black and white. For this particular painting, you're not gonna need blue. But if you wanna have blue, there is nothing wrong with that. Or if you wanted to change up the colors, and you wanted to add a little bit of blue or purple in your background, go for it. It's going to look really, really good as well. So now that we have everything that we need, let's start. What are you going to start with? If you guys have something that is large and circular, please prepare it. In my case, I have my plate that is large and circular. And it's exactly the size that I need for my son. If you guys want to have, um, if you want to find something in your house that you could use to outline your son, it could be Tupperware lid again, it can be a plate, it can be a pot lid, it can be a frying pan lid, anything you want to just grab that thing. It might be easier for you to use that for outline than freehand it. If you feel, if you feel like you could definitely do this freehand, no problem, you're allowed to do it freehand. And what are we gonna start with? Usually we would start by wetting canvas, but in this case, we need to put the outline first. If you have your um, circular thing that you're gonna use for outline and pencil, you can do this in pencil. But I don't wanna assume that all of you guys have pencils ready, so I am gonna do this in paint. What are we gonna need? Grab two different colors on your plate and put yellow, and white. So these two colors, yellow and white. My yellow and my white. So 
So I put these two wonderful colors, yellow and white, on my plate. Now I'm gonna grab small brush and I'm gonna grab straight yellow and that plate that I was going to outline and then I put it somewhere. Here it is, found it. So I'm gonna grab this plate and I'm gonna position it somewhere in the middle but a bit lower. So somewhere here. But you can position it higher, totally up to you. It doesn't have to be exactly in this particular spot. Totally up to you where you're going to position it. And I am going to outline it with yellow and a small brush. And as you can see, I am not really bothered about my outline being perfect or small. I did a really um, messy line, which is good. It's fine for this painting because we're going to color all that with darker colors. So if your line is quite messy like mine, that's totally fine. That's not a problem. So I'm going to give you guys a little minute to do this. And as soon as you have it, wash off your small brush. You don't want to have your paint dry on your brush. You always want to keep your brushes nice and clean. So as soon as you have it, wash off your small brush. And now, once you washed off your small brush, make sure you put red on your palette. So you should have white, yellow, and red on your palette at this point. If you are one of those very fancy people who have everything pre-mixed, good. That way, maybe use some orange as well, because we're going to be using orange, but I will be making orange out of yellow, red, and white. But if you want to use pre-mixed orange, that's no problem. Put it in your plate, and we can use it. So now, once you guys have this, and you have red, white, and yellow on your plate, what are you going to do? You're going to grab your big brush. And you're going to grab some white, you're going to scoop it on the side and you'll add a little bit of yellow to it and you'll mix it up to make very light yellow. So I mix it up. This is the color I'm going to start with. Do you see how light it is? It's almost white but not white. It's light yellow. And with this color, I am going to go right here and I'm going to add the top part. Now you don't have to worry about your lines if you go over your lines on this particular step. That's okay. We're going to do all the background later, so you're going to cover them up in the end anyway. And I'm going to color this top part. Ta-da! Good. Now, I am going to add a little bit more yellow into the same color I just used to make darker color. And with this darker color, I'm going to go lower. So I'm going to add it here first. And then as I go up, I'm going to blend it into my very, very light yellow. And again, as you see, I'm not really bothered about keeping um, everything inside the circle. Some of it is going outside the circle, and I am okay with it. Okay, guys, and next I am going to take straight yellow. So very, very bright yellow, not even washing my brush, just the same brush, straight bright yellow. And again, quite a bit of it. And with this light, uh, bright yellow, I'm going to continue going lower here. I'm going to go right here. Now, if you ask me, Vera, do you go all the way to the bottom? No, I do not go all the way to the bottom. But if you wanted to, you could go all the way to the bottom. That would not be a mistake either. It's just going to be a little bit of extra unnecessary work. So do you see I added to the bottom part? And now do you see there is a harsh line in between? So as soon as you finish this bottom, you can lightly start blending it up. And how you blend it, make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush. I usually start blending once I almost run out of paint on my brush and I only have a touch left. Then I just continue going up into the colors that I already have there. And you will see your paint will start blending, especially if your uh, earlier colors are still wet. 
that's perfect. It's going to blend really, really well. Another option that you could do if, let's say, this is dry and this technique is not working out for you, you could wash off your brush, lightly dab it on a cloth or a paper towel, and with a clean, wet brush, go right over the edge where two colors connect and continue going uh, back and forth until you blend it. So guys, this is what it should look like. Now, before this dries, we need to continue on to our next step right away. So what are we going to do? We're going to grab some yellow, we're going to scoop it on the side, and we will add a tiny, tiny little bit of red to it to make beautiful orange color. If you have premixed orange, that's fine. You could use premixed orange. So I scoop some yellow, add a touch of red, mix it into orange. Now I'm going to go right under again. So right here, and as you see, I am going quite further, and then I am blending it up. So the same way, I'm putting my color underneath first, and then as soon as I run out of paint on my brush, I will continue going up and blending it into my yellow. And do you see how beautiful is this blending? And the reason is, I only had a touch of paint on my brush, and this yellow was super wet. So while it's wet, it's much, much easier for you to blend. Ta-da! This is what it should look like right now at this point. Now I'm going to put it aside for a second. I'm going to wash my brush and I will give you guys a few minutes to do this. And whenever you have it, uh, wash off your brushes as well. Make sure they're nice and clean because we use some white on it and for next step, we don't need white. And if you guys need a little bit more time, feel free to pause this video to give yourself enough time and then unpause it whenever you're ready to continue. And I'll have a sip of my tea. Okay, I'm going to continue. If you guys need a bit more time, just pause this. Push pause, give yourself enough time, then unpause me and continue painting with me. I have my large brush nice and clean. Now I'm going to move to a darker, redder, uh, browny, orangey color on a background. How I'm going to do this, I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to mix my color. I will start with a base of yellow. So for this particular color, it's very important that you don't, you don't have any white mixed into it. That's why we wash our brush. So make sure you grab some yellow, put it on the side. Then I'm going to take some red, mix it into it. And you will see it will get like a darker, redder orange. This is what this color looks like for me. And now I need a tiny, tiny dot of black. Now, I'm not going to add all this black right into that spot. Of course not. I'm going to put it on the side first. So I'm going to put my black on the side. And now out of that side, I am only going to take a very, very tiny smidge of black. This is more than enough to darken it up. And with this light browny orangey color, I'm going to go right around here. So now we're going to clean up all that mess. So do you see how I'm going not to the yellow that I originally used as a sketch, but a little bit further to create a new clean edge. And you're probably wondering, are we going all the way around? No, we're not going all the way around. We're going almost all the way around here. And do you see I'm doing this in a circular motion?
Beautiful. Now I am going to continue going further. Oh, well, first I'm going to bring my hands a little bit further. And again, do you see I'm doing it very, very lightly with just whatever I have left on my brush, which is almost nothing. I'm almost out of paint. Which is perfect for this particular step. Do you see how now my edges are a bit more blended? Now I am going to continue going further and I'm going to be darkening my color as I go. So to the same color I just used, actually I ran out of yellow so I need a little bit more yellow on my plate and I ran out of this color so I'll make it again. But if you still have a bit of it, what are you going to do? You're just going to add a bit more red and a touch more black. And for me, first I will make it again. Yellow, red, black. Yeah, and just add a touch more red and a touch more black this time. And what you could do to test your color before you commit to it and go all the way, just put a little spot and see, is this the right color? Is that what I want? For me, it's not bad, but I want it a bit darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit more red and a bit more black. Yeah. My next color is great. It's perfect. So with this darker color, let me show you guys again closer to what color we're looking for. Do you see the difference between this and that? Now, it's always best to do the steps right away because the faster you do it, the easier it's going to be for you to blend it. Once your paint dries, it's very hard to blend. So what I'm going to do, I am going to start blending and I'm going to go around it first. So I'm not going to add it close to my original light orangey brown. I'm going to add it all the way around it first. And only then, once I got close to it and I ran out of paint on my brush, I'm going to start blending. And how I do it, the same way that I did with other colors, I am just going to continue going into my orange. So the same motion without refilling my brush, which is very important. I am going to continue over that line, over that harsh line. Beautiful. And for my last color here, I am going to make it even darker. So I'm going to add more red and more black to the same color. So just scoop more red, add it to the same color and touch more black. You don't want it to turn black completely, but you want it to be a little bit darker. Let's try this again and see if that works. I think I could go darker. No, no, this is good. This is good. No, darker. Changing my mind as we go. Okay. So with the same color. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to continue going around. Now something to think for you guys is do you want to do your sides or not? And I'm going to go all the way. Do you see? Until the very ends here. And I'm blending it as I go here just because it's not much to color. So I might as well blend it right away. But you could put it first and then blend it, and blending would be the exact same way as we've done with previous colors, or you can blend it as you go, whatever is easier for this particular step. Now guys, something for you to think about, if you would like, you can paint the edges of your canvas as well as you go. That way, whenever you finished, your painting is going to look super, super cool from every angle. So just as you go, paint the edges of your canvas. I am not going to be doing it. And the reason is I am holding my painting so often. And if I paint my edges now, it's going to end up all on my hands and not on my canvas. Now, please do this. If you don't mind spending two more minutes, it's going to look really cool. It's going to make a big difference for you. Alternatively, you could do this later once we finish this painting, but it might be hard because you might need to color match your paint, and that's not the easiest task. So totally up to you guys. If you want to do it now, do it now. If you want to do it later, you could totally do this later. Now, 
what I am going to do is as soon as you have that, before your paint dries, you're going to grab straight black. And I'm going to go right on the edges here. And do you see I'm adding a little bit black on the very edge? And then I'm blending it in. The same technique. Just as I run out of paint, I'm continue going closer in and in. And I'll do the same thing on all the corners. And again, if you're doing your edges, don't forget about them. You might want to hit your edges just a little bit with black as well. Very lightly. Sorry, if you guys doing, yeah, if you're doing your edges. Beautiful. That is exactly what we want it to be right now. Now, whenever you have it, wash off your brush. If you don't have it yet, and you feel like, mm, I need a few more minutes, no problem. Just wash your, oh, sorry, pause this video, give yourself enough time, and then whenever you're ready, unpause it, but make sure whenever you finish this step, you wash your brush. very shortly we're gonna go back to our sunset to our Sun and we'll work a little bit more on our Sun now guys I assume now you finish the step. If you haven't yet, again, please pause it, finish it, then unpause it and join me. Once you're done and our brushes are nice and clean, we're going to move back to our sun. And what are we going to do? We're going to take our medium brush and white paint. And with the medium brush and white paint, we're going to go around our sun right here. And if your orange is still wet like mine, even better if it's dry no problem doesn't affect the step so we're gonna go using our white paint right here do you see I'm adding it right on the edge and you will see if your orange is still wet it will start blending into your orange which is not bad it's actually a really nice look if your orange is super dry that's no problem as well it's still gonna look really good and as soon as you have this line of white that you added and as you saw I added it pretty thick I had a lot of paint on my brush I'm gonna wash off my brush as soon as I have it I'm not blending it notice it I'm gonna wash off my brush And only once I washed off my brush, I'm going to take clean, slightly wet brush. And now with this brush, I will blend it. So I'm going to go right where my paint ends. Oh, that was a, that was a drip. That's okay. It's incorporated in our painting now. Do you see with a clean, slightly wet brush, I go right over this harsh line where that brush strokes of white ends and I'm smudging it and that's how I'm blending this time Ta -da! okay I have my son I am happy with it I don't think I want to add much more here what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to the bottom part and I'm gonna start adding this bright bright orangey red so I'm gonna wash off once again my brush I'm going to lightly dab it on a cloth and I'm going to start with a base of yellow. I'm going to scoop some yellow on the side. If you're using premix paint, you can grab orangey red or any other bright color that you really like. For me, I'm going to scoop some yellow on the side. I'll add a little bit of red and I'll mix it into this 
nice orangey bright red. So you want it darker than this, but you don't want it this color because this one had a touch of black in it. This is very similar color to this, but no black added. That's the color that you want. And with this color and our small brush, I'm going to start adding brush strokes right here. Do you see how light and transparent they are? And how that happens, A, I am not using too much paint on my brush, B, I am not pushing my brush very hard into my canvas. I am very lightly scratching the surface of my canvas, as you can see. That's how you get the transparency, just by touching your canvas very, very lightly with a brush. Beautiful start. I am going to continue building this. Now I'm going to add a little bit more red to the same color I just used to make it even redder. Or if you would like, you can even use just a straight red for next step. And you see we're adding some from the bottom. Again, very lightly overlapping that orange that we just added. Very, very lightly. But now we go all the way to the sides too. Beautiful. I am happy with this. I'm going to let it be. And I'm going to wash off my medium brush. If you guys need a few more minutes, that's no problem. As always, feel free to pause this video to give yourself a little bit more time to finish this step. Hmm, I'm going to paint. Okay guys, I'll give you a few more minutes and in the meantime, I'm going to go get rid of this paint on my face. Okay, I am back. So I am going to continue and I will go around on my background now and I'll add a few clouds. What I will use for it is I'm going to use medium brush and you can use whichever brush you want, medium um, flat, medium pointy, medium square, whichever, but this is what my medium looks like. As you can see, it's a flat brush. It's not square. It has the rounded edge, but it is flat. And what colors I'm going to do, I'm going to do two different colors. I'm going to do straight black and I will do um, like a lighter color, lighter than this. So I'm going to do something darker than this and something lighter than this. Alternatively, instead of straight black, you, what you could use, you could use this darker, browny, reddy color. Totally up to you guys. If you want a bit more contrast, go straight black. If you want a bit less contrast, go with that burgundy color. So as I mentioned, I'm going to go with straight red. I grabbed a little bit of straight, sorry, straight black. I grabbed a little bit of a straight black on my brush and I'm going to start with clouds that are on a side. And what I will do now using my black, I'm going to start adding cloud, very light and transparent. As you can see, I'm only using a tiny touch of paint on my brush. So my cloud is not very dark or blobby. I want it very light, very transparent. 
and then I'll add another one on the other side. Again, very lightly with just a touch of paint on my brush. And as you see, I am just building my clouds out of horizontal smidges, out of horizontal light and transparent brush strokes. And I'm going to go a bit further here. Do you see? It's not very solid either. It's very transparent. There's a lot of air in between my brush strokes. Yes, there are certain areas that are a bit more solid, like the middles, but other areas are not so much. And as you guys notice, the structure of my cloud is it has a fluffier middle, and it has a um, nice, long, pointy tail. That's intentional structure. Now, I have a few in black. I think I'm going to add maybe one, two more in black. So maybe I'll add one more right here. Just so those two clouds don't feel lonely. We'll give them some friends. Happy little friend clouds. And oh, let's go right here. Happy little cloud friends. This looks good. I think I can move on to my lighter clouds now. And how I'm going to move on to my lighter clouds, I'm going to make that lighter color. Actually, guys, I'm not sure why this is glaring so much. Yeah. Now, let me bring it as close as I can to you guys so you can see it a bit better. Wonderful. So now I'm washing off my brush and I'm washing it really well. And as soon as I wash it, I'm going to dry it really well as well. If you have sink nearby and you would like to change your water, now is a perfect time for you to do that because your water is probably very dark at this point and you could definitely benefit from having a little bit lighter water. So if you want to go wash your water, pause this video and then come back and we'll continue. If you don't want to wash, you can continue with me right away. And we make a lighter color. Now, what do we mix for lighter color? Mix orange. So start with yellow again. Start with the base of yellow. Then add some red to it. Mix orange. And then add a tiny, tiny touch of white to it. Very important. You have to have white into your paint. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to get really light. But you need to have at least a touch of white. Even if you can't get orange without white, it's very important that you add some white in it because we're going to be working over very dark color. And if you don't add white, you're going to have a hard time seeing this. So I have my orange. As you guys can see, this is the color. And you see, I only have a little bit of it on my brush. And that's intentional because we're going to use it here. And you want it very transparent again. And lightly. Now I'm going to add it mostly under and closer to the sun. So on this side, I'm going to add it on the left side bottom. On this side, I'm going to add it on the right side bottom. And I'm going to start doing, again, my little brush strokes. So exact same thing that I did with black to build those clouds. Now I'm going to do with orange. have quite a few here. You could add more of it if you wanted to. You don't have to limit yourself to this amount. If you want to have a bit more of this orangey uh, light highlight under your clouds, go for it. So I have a bit of it on this side. Now I'm going to go on the other side. Thank you. 
And now that I have it on both sides, do you see how light and transparent it is? It's hardly visible. You guys could go much bolder if you want to. It's not a mistake if you go bolder. It will look really, really good. Or you can go very light and transparent as I am going here. Actually, I'm gonna add a bit more because as it dries, it's really hard to see it. It's not a bad thing, but I want you guys to be able to see it. And what I will do with the same color, I will add a bit more clouds going lower in the exact same motion starting right from the edge of the canvas. I'll add some more. And right now it looks really light, but only because it's a glare. As you can see, it's not that much of a light color. But it could be. If you wanted it to be light, you could. I'll add one right here. I'll add one right here too. And now I'm gonna go even lighter. So now I'm gonna mix in the same color that I just used. I'm gonna mix in a touch of yellow and a touch of white. To lighten it up. And with this even lighter color, I'm gonna go onto the same clouds but less. So again, very lightly, and the best tool to fix the boo-boo, if you put a boo-boo, is your finger, just smudge it. That's how you fix it. And now, as you guys noticed, I am using, if before I used the full width of a brush, now I'm just using the top edge, because I want my lines to be thinner. So I'm gonna use just the top edge here. And overlap a little bit of this color under my clouds. And this one too. And the other guys are right here. What a sunset. Okay, I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to set it here and I'm going to let all of this dry up for just a few minutes. And in the meantime, I am going to take some white. And with white, I will add just a few little highlights again to my clouds, but not as much now and not everywhere. So I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm going to dry it on a cloth. And then I'm going to take some white, but not a lot. So do you see I took a full brush? But what I'm going to do now is with paint on my brush, I'm going to dry it up because I don't want to have too much paint on my brush. So take some paint on your brush and then dry it up. Or you can just take a little bit of paint on your brush and you don't have to dry it up. And with this, I will add just a few highlights and I will add them on my top clouds only. Let me get as close to you guys as I can here. Very, very lightly. I'm going to add just a few highlights right here, very lightly scraping the canvas. But for this, it might be a bit better if your oranges and yellows are drier. So if you feel like they are way too wet, give it a second. If you have a hairdryer nearby, grab a hairdryer. You can blow dry this painting with a hairdryer. And if you don't have hairdryer, the great way to dry it is by just waving your canvas around. 
but let me show you this highlights and then I'll show you how to wave your canvas around. Do you see? Only very close to the sun. And there's such a small smidge of white. It's not a lot of white there. Okay. Now, if you don't have hair dryer nearby, the really good way, let me fix the camera again, to dry your canvas is to do this. Grab it and manually dry it up. By doing this, dries really fast, actually. So feel free to do this, guys, if you need to. If you don't need to, that's fine. You don't have to do this. And now once you have all this beauty, now we're going to move on to our black areas. So you're going to grab, again, your medium brush and black paint. But this time you're going to need a lot of black paint. And make sure you wash off your medium brush really, really, really well for this step. So I washed off my medium brush, took some black paint quite a bit. Now we're going to start by putting one line right here. And it could be straight, but it doesn't have to. It could be a little bit on a hill, whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to put this shape, but again, you make your own shape. It doesn't have to be this. And after this, we're going to color in this bottom part fully. Beautiful. I have all this bottom colored in with black. Now, I'm going to move on to my tree. How I'm going to do this, I am going to start by putting tree trunk and large branches. After this, I'm going to move to smaller branches. And for smaller branches, it's very important that you use smaller brush for the tree trunk and bigger branches. Guys, up to you. I'm going to be using my medium brush but my canvas is fairly big and my medium brush is fairly small. So if you're using the same canvas and the same brush, totally fine, you could do medium brush. Um, or if you feel like your medium brush is a good size and a good fit for you, no problem. But if you feel like you, your canvas is smaller and your medium brush is too big, feel free to use smaller brush. It's good to be safe rather than sorry. So you might want to err on a side of caution here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, let me quickly refill my palette with the black paint because I'm going to need it. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to grab some black, but do you see how I'm flatting my brush, making it flat? I'm flattening my brush on a plate because I'm going to use my top edge. So I want it to be nice, my brush to be nice and flat. So it has a nice straight top edge because I'm going to be painting like this with the top edge to make smaller lines. So I flat my brush, I filled it with black. And now I'm going to start adding tree trunk. I will start by putting a line. Let me bring it closer. I'll start by putting a line right here. Just a line. Very simple. Now, as you notice, it's a little bit wider on the bottom intentionally. So that's important that it's a little bit wider on the bottom. Now I'm going to continue adding lines from it using the top edge of my brush. And they're going to be pretty straight. They're not going to be much of a shaped. They kind of have a little curve to them, but don't make them wavy like snakes. You don't want those. So I have one big one here. I will add another one 
right here. And as soon as you add it, make it a bit thicker on the bottom as well. All your branches and a tree trunk, everything needs to be thicker on a side where it's growing from. So if it's growing from the bottom, it needs to be a bit thicker closer to the bottom. I'm going to continue adding branches here, but now out of those branches. And you see I'm giving them a little bit of curve, but not nothing crazy. So I'll add one right here. I'll add one right here. Do you see I'm doing more branches coming out from those branches? But again, nothing too crazy curved. Okay, I think I'm good. If later I feel like I don't have enough, I can add a few more of those lines. But I think I should be okay. Actually, I'm gonna add one more right away. Let's go with one more. Beautiful. Now, this time you could wash off your medium brush, but you don't have to because we're going to use it very soon for the tops. And if you wanted to use your small brush to correct any of the branches, go for it. Or ideally, you shouldn't add this in a medium brush. But again, if you feel comfortable, if you're like me and if you're like, oh, no, I can totally do this with a medium brush. No problem. It's not a mistake. It is good for you to do it in any brush that you can manage. But if you feel like, no, medium brush is not my best friend, do all the smaller branches in uh, your small brush. And now if you need to correct any of them, you could do your, could grab your small brush and just fix it up wherever it needs to be fixed and however it needs to be fixed. Gonna make my tree trunk a bit thicker. I'm quite happy with this. So, I'm gonna let it be. I'm gonna wash off my small brush. And now, using my medium brush and black paint, I'm gonna start adding the leaves and how you're gonna do this. You're gonna grab your medium brush and you're gonna dab the tops in um, like a group of dabs, like blobs, but you want them the same shape as clouds. Do you remember how we had this fluffier middle, uh, horizontal, pointy, not long, nice edges shape? That's exactly the shape you're gonna use for your tree. All the leaves have to be flat, and horizontal. So let me show you. I'm gonna start, it doesn't matter, I'll, I can start here. So I'm gonna start dabbing like this. And you see the transparency of the leaves? That's because I don't have too much paint on my brush. If I have more paint, it's gonna be blobby and you're not gonna see the brush strokes. You're, you're not gonna see this print of the bristles. And I do wanna see it. That's why I'm using only a little bit of paint on my brush. If you guys have lots of brushes at home and you're not sure which one to use for this step, use the worst one. Whichever brush you have that is almost dead and it always leaves funny prints behind, use that one. It's perfect for this particular step.
beautiful. I'm gonna continue going. And certain areas are gonna be more filled than others. So certain areas are gonna be a bit more transparent and certain areas are gonna be uh, more solid. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I am quite happy with this. Now what I'm gonna do next, I will add the kangaroo. But I will give you guys a little minute to do this. And whenever you have it, feel free to wash off your brushes. Don't leave them unwashed. That will ruin your brush. We don't want that. So make sure they're nice and clean. Now guys, we're gonna move on to our kangaroo and I will be showing you with small uh, brush and black paint and I'll be doing it right on the canvas. If you would like to practice on a piece of paper first, that's totally fine, go for it. Just grab a piece of paper and try it there first and you can do it with brush or with pencil. Or if you would like to go straight on a canvas but use pencil first, totally fine. The only thing if you're using pencil, make sure all of this is dry because if you try putting pencil on a wet paint and then try to erase it, it's not going to come off. So there is no point in using pencil if you're doing it on a wet canvas. Make sure it's nice and dry, at least the area where you're going to be adding pencil. Or if you feel very confident in your abilities, feel free to grab small brush and follow me. Now I will start by putting one weird shape for the body of our kangaroo somewhere around here. It's gonna look like a teardrop on an angle. It's pretty weird. And how far is it gonna be from the bottom? About this far. So, as I mentioned, it's going to look like a weird teardrop. And then you could color it in right away if you would like, or you don't have to, totally up to you. If you're doing pencil, don't color it in clearly, just do the outline. If you're doing brush, you could color it in right away or you could leave the coloring for later. I like sometimes coloring things in right away because I find that it really helps my brain to see it better and to understand what the end result is going to look like. But again, you could always adjust it after. Okay, so I have my perfect shape. Now I'm gonna continue on to the head. So I'm gonna make my neck a little bit bigger and I will add the head. And I'll color it in. Now guys, it looks weird, it will get better, I promise. That's always, there's always this part in painting that looks super weird and then it just somehow magically gets much better. So that's that part. Now, once you have the head, we're going to add ears. And they look really similar to bunny ears in a way. And 
after this, we're going to move on to the legs and the tail. So let's start with the tail first because that's a big part of our kangaroo. And tail is pretty simple. So starting from here, you're going to put one line. It's going to look like Nike's just do it line. And now we're going to thicken it up closer to our kangaroo. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger. Beautiful tail. And now I have legs. Legs are very important. And I will start with the back leg and then I will end the front leg. And I'm going to make it out of two parts. So first part is going to go right here. Part one and part two. Now I'm going to add a second leg and they will be a little bit apart. Beautiful and hands. Beautiful. That's our kangaroo. If you guys wanted to add anything to your kangaroo, if you want to go over it and finalize some details and you want to make it a little bit different, you want to finalize your shape, go for it. That's totally fine. You don't have to get it right from the first try. That's why it's always good to start by using a pencil. That way, if you don't like it, you can always correct it and make it different. Now, if you guys wanted to put two kangaroos, you can just add another one right here or right here. You can have a smaller one, exact same step. Start with the body, then head, um, then ears, then make your way to the tail, legs, hands. Pretty much the same thing. And what you could do, you can just rewind to me showing it again and do it all together. And what another thing that you could do optional and very helpful is every time I do step, just pause the video. Give yourself enough time to do the exact same thing. Unpause. That's the good thing about uh, recorded virtual tutorials that you can always pause it, give yourself enough time, and then continue whenever you're ready for it. Now, a few more things I'm going to add here is using the same small brush and black paint, I will add a little bit of grass. And how I'm going to do this, I'm just going to flick my brush in a few areas. And you choose where that's going to be. Do you see how I'm flicking it from the bottom up? Because I want to have a little bit of grass here. It's totally up to you guys how much grass you're going to have. You can have a lot. Or you can have a little, or you can have none. All of it is fine. Perfect. I have a little bit of grass here and there. I am good with it. And now I'm going to switch the color. So I will wash off my brush. Dry it on my cloth and I will grab some white paint. And with this white paint, I will add just a few highlights. So I'm going to start by adding them on my branches. Not all of them, just a few. And only on the side that's facing the sun. So the side that's closer to our sun. I'll let it as a little highlight on the tree trunk as well. You could add a little bit on your kangaroo if you wanted to. Optional, guys, that's not an important step. If you don't do this, it's not good. you're not going to be wrong. But if you wanted to, you could.
And now I'm going to switch to my medium brush once again. And grab my medium brush, make sure it's nice and clean. And then, not don't wet your brush, on a dry brush, grab just a little bit of white, just a touch, and then dab it up again on a cloth or a paper towel um, or a piece of paper as I showed you before. And with this little bit of white, we're going to add a highlight onto the bottom parts of those fluffy tops of our tree just a little bit. You don't want too much of it. You don't want it to be the focal point of this painting. But just a little bit wouldn't hurt and it would look really nice. And you see again, I'm doing it on a side that is facing our sun that's close to our sun. Beautiful. And now I'm going to add the final touches to this painting. And the final touch is I'm going to add a few stars that are coming through already. So I'm going to take my small brush white paint and I'm just going to add a few little dots on the top of my sky to make it look like there are some stars that are starting to come through. I'm not going to add them on actual clouds because stars shouldn't be added to the clouds. But yeah, just a few stars around to make it look like they are already showing up. It's that time of the day. Beautiful. And after this, guys, the only thing that is left for you on this painting is to sign it with your names and you are officially done. If you haven't done your sides as we went, what you could do whenever you finish, you could just grab your painting. You can grab either black paint and color all the edges with the black paint. It's much easier than color matching. Or you could color match every color and wrap it around onto the edges. Totally up to you guys whether you want it. Just black edges or color match. Color match looks really good and it looks like you put a lot of work into it. Because you probably do when you color match it. Uh, but black also looks really nice because it makes all those colors pop really well. Guys, don't forget to sign it. This is very important. This is your original piece of art. You made it and you should be proud of yourself. Now, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. If you want to rewatch this video, go for it. If you would like to paint it again, go for it. Or again, as I mentioned, if you would like to add another uh, kangaroo onto this painting, absolutely, that's not a problem. Add another kangaroo, or you can even add two, one here, one here. Totally fine, they'll just have to be much smaller. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you made a beautiful painting. If you want to share it with us, we would love to see your results. And again, feel free to rewatch this video. And thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great night.